My name is John Stommel. Travis Chikowski. Uh, we work together uh, under the name Rather Severe, and uh, we're painting a mural here in this intersection that was actually designed by Travis. Yeah, we, uh, we made a design that we felt like we could execute in a couple of days with the help of 20 kids. Uh, a group called Color Outside the Lines is going to come and help fill in all the colors tomorrow. So, just out here getting the surface prepped and starting on the sketching. We worked with them on a mural right across the, down on Widler and MLK over in December. That was our first experience working with them. and. And yeah, after that we kind of reconnected for this project because we definitely use an extra hand and want to involve other people in the community. You can check out our website at rathersevere.com uh, and our email address is on there or you can send us a message directly through our website. Hey, my name is Anna Barlow. Um, I started this nonprofit called Color Outside the Lines about three years ago. And so we do art and music outreach for foster kids and at-risk youth in Portland. This is our third collaborative mural piece, um, and it's Eco District um, in conjunction with City Repair, and so it's kind of a collaborative piece with Color Outside the Lines. So Eco District was helping to beautify the Lloyd Center and kind of reached out to us and said, oh, you should have some of the kids come and help paint. And so it's a really awesome collaboration in which the kids are kind of like the primary artists for the piece, which is really great for just their confidence and understanding teamwork and building kind of a sense of how larger scale art production happens. So it's really fun for them and they're able to come back and kind of appreciate it in the future. ColorOutsideLines.org is our website. There's an easy way to kind of connect that way. Otherwise our Facebook page, Color Outside the Lines, but there's so many opportunities for volunteers. You know, we have lots of programming throughout the month with teens and younger kids and do all kinds of art therapy and art creative outreach stuff for them. So yeah, there's always room for, for people to be involved. My name is Sarah Heineke. I'm the executive director of Lloyd Eco District. And we started thinking about doing an intersection repair project a couple years ago when we were trying to find a good way to engage the community in a beautification project and, uh, and start thinking about what would be a fun thing to introduce to the community in terms of uh, making this place a more beautiful place. And we got introdu introduced to um, the folks at City Repair and all the work that they do around the town, around village building convergence. And um, so we just started a dialogue with them and said, look, we're really interested in doing something in a commercial area of Portland. We know you do a lot of stuff in residential areas and that this might be a different kind of thing. Um, it'll certainly be different in terms of getting property owner buy-in and making sure that it's safe because there's lots of tra more traffic and <laughs> things like that. Um, but we worked through all those technical details and and then, uh, you know, so we were sort of plodding along, trying to figure out, you know, where to have it and who to get involved. And it was uh, around Christmas time, and I was driving along Widler uh, towards work. And um, the folks that were doing the repair, the mural project on the corner of um, MLK and Widler and Broadway were out there in like really cold weather, like, you know, during the holiday, it was super cold. It was like, you know, near freezing temperatures. And there were kids out there painting a mural on the side of this really old dilapidated building. Like, oh my God, not only is that beautiful, like I got to figure out who's doing that, but also like, wow, what an amazing, like ability to get kids to work on something cool like this. So tracked down who was involved and it was rather severe, the muralists and color outside the lines. And we got together and said like, can you work with us on this intersection repair project as far as the design goes and color outside of the lines. Can you guys work with us in terms of connecting us with some foster kids and their families? and um, and it's just been this collaborative process since then in terms of coming up with what we have today. And um, it's been really fun. I see a lot of people coming out of their buildings and asking us what's going on. 
and that's an opportunity for us to tell our story about what what does our organization generally do, and so that's that's a great opportunity for us to do do and conduct some outreach to the community, and I think you know generally people are really pleased to see that somebody cares about their community and that they can get involved and there's a vehicle for doing that. Um, that feels good that that's happening in the place where you live. Um, and we're really happy to be able to provide that kind of opportunity. And for us, our organization, that's just a really lovely entree into deeper dives around sustainability. So if we start making those connections and developing relationships, then around fun and place making things like this, then we, when we go back to folks and say, you know, we have some other projects that are a little more sort of challenging in terms of what we would ask of you to do in terms of engaging in the question of resilience in your neighborhood or sustainability in your lives, um, then, you know, we've already established a relationship and we can work with folks. So that's sort of our MO in terms of doing community uh, development projects like this. So we got started around 2011, and it was um, an initiative out of the mayor's office and out of Portland Development Commission, now Prosper Portland. Um, and um, basically it was this idea, this big idea, like can, can we as Portlanders create a neighborhood scale sustainability initiative that is driven by community and driven by um, urban planning practices, green building concepts, and what would that look like if people all sort of collaborated on a neighborhood scale. Um, and so we've been doing work at a neighborhood scale around things like energy efficiency, waste reduction, alternative forms of transportation, um, a little bit of water, stormwater management kind of work uh, since then. And we've branched out to include ourselves to be more uh, you know, more involved in residents, more involved in the community, broadly speaking, than just when we started, which was more focused on buildings and the built environment. We're big fans of City Repair. Uh, we've been working with them on not only this project, but a pollinator corridor on uh, Multnomah. And, uh, you know, that's one of those sort of next level deeper dives in terms of getting people involved and invested in the neighborhood um, and they've been terrific to work with like they're just such excellent folks we have a website and it's uh, ecoloid.org and just get a hold of us there and we'll reach out to you and find a place for you to be involved with us my name is Devin Snyder. I'm with Lloyd Eco District. I'm the Communications and Outreach Coordinator um, and one of three on a scrappy team. And this project came about actually before I started at Lloyd Eco District last March. Um, an intern who had already been there had envisioned this project, was really familiar with City Repair's work and thought that the Lloyd neighborhood really needed it. And um, so when she transitioned out, it kind of fell into my plate and have been kind of leading it ever since. So uh, kind of the reason why we decided to specifically put a mural here is that traditionally this neighborhood's been really commercial and business oriented. And that's still the case, but over the next couple of years, we're gonna see a really large influx of residents. And right now, because of so many employees, around like five or six o'clock, everyone leaves and the neighborhood feels really empty. And there's just so much potential here. Um, there's a lot of new businesses coming in and a lot of folks that want to see the spaces activated and open and friendly. So we thought that putting a mural in would kind of make it feel less like a business district and more of like a neighborhood, which it is. Um, and it has its quirks, but uh, it's still a place where people want, we want people to be and to feel comfortable and warm um, and like they're not just gonna come nine to five and leave. There's a lot of construction here. Um, in terms of where in Portland the, the city kind of predicts there to be the largest amount of growth is in the Lloyd because there's a lot of capacity for it. Obviously in neighborhoods it's getting harder and harder to um, to find places that you can like turn into apartment complexes and like multi like multi-use structures, which I'm okay with. I think it's 
there's been a lot of buildings that have been torn down, but um, here there's a lot of availability to build up and have that kind of mixed use uh, ground floor business, top floor apartments. So, and obviously Portland's a really attractive place to be moving right now as well. So it is a little bit of both. Um, there's going to be a bunch of new apartment buildings coming in, and there's already ones that are fairly new that are at full occupancy. So we're just expecting more and more people to come. And there's a lot of people already here. They're just not out and about. They're kind of part of that crowd that maybe lives here but is away at, in the evening because there's just not a lot to do or they don't really feel like it's a neighborhood for them. So we're working to change that. And we're hoping to kind of create like a theme throughout the neighborhood. So maybe something similar in color to kind of unify the space. Um, coming up in the fall, we have a couple different uh, community events, like a big vendor fair that we're doing in the mall. It's going to be around resiliency, so specifically um, emergency preparedness in a non-scary way. I think there's a lot of fear-mongering that goes around talking about being prepared for like the earthquake, and we want to do it kind of focused more on like how do you get your family prepared? How do you create community in, a, in an apartment building so that when there is an emergency, you have folks you can rely on that you know really well. Um, so we're going to be doing a big uh, community fair around that in the mall in um, early November. So getting folks connected to resources and teaching them how to um, pack like bug out bags and also we're going to have City Repair come in and help kind of lead a shop of, like how do you get people to come to a potluck so you can meet your neighbor, especially again in, there's a lot of apartments here. How do you do that in an apartment because it's a little bit harder, you're a little more isolated. So that's coming up in the fall. Um, right now we're also working on a campaign with the Audubon Society of Portland called Lights Out Lloyd. Uh, it's educational campaign around reducing nighttime light pollution because the fall migration is happening right now and a lot of birds are passing through Portland on their way down south. So educating folks and businesses about turning off their lights at night or reducing it so that birds don't get distracted and confused, come into the city and potentially get hurt. So those are kind of the two ones that we're juggling right now. And obviously, in addition to those kind of community-facing programs that we do, we have a lot of long-term planning that we work on with businesses and other um, stakeholders in the neighborhood. The biggest one that we're kicking off in the fall is a waste reduction action campaign and a uh, waste reduction action plan, RAP, because uh, we love our acronyms. And that's going to be a lot of education for businesses and for employees about um, Food waste is kind of the biggest hot topic, but obviously there's a lot of, waste encompasses a lot of things. So um, that's kind of our more long-term planning project that we're working on right now, in addition to all the other little neighborhood kind of community-facing programs that we do all throughout the year. And uh, we're pretty enthusiastic about things, so we tend to kind of hear about something and take it up really quickly. So who knows what will we get started in the next. So we want to have uh, a family come in to that vendor fair that we're doing in November. There's a couple of them that I think are, that come in fairly often to do demonstrations. And they teach folks how to, like what supplies do they need and how to kind of go about getting that stuff together in a way that's not scary and that's manageable. And also tell folks that, oh, like you got all your stuff together, go camping with it and like see how it, see how it works when you're trying to, you know, camp and make pancakes out out on a griddle and maybe it's not the best option. Um, so we're going to bring some folks in to do some of that specifically from Nets and see if they want to, if folks from the neighborhood want to get involved and maybe start their own net team in Lloyd. I think that'd be really exciting. Travis and John, um, the muralists are amazing. Right there. They're great. You should interview them as well if they, if they want to be interviewed. Um, yeah, they have been so great to work with and very patient. Um, and I really like their vision. Just it's fun in color and poppy. So they did one over on um, Widler and MLK. That was also a project that they did, the one that wraps around the building. So maybe you can kind of see the similarities in their style. But it's like nice to add to it. We don't want the Lloyd to be this like standalone island of, of gray and business. We want to make it feel really warm. And we want to kind of have some type of like unifying link between a lot of the projects that we do, whether it's like color or style. Um, so if we can get something on a wall that's similar, I think that'd be awesome.